back on trail from Chama. So that means that I am completely done with New Mexico. I did make some gear changes. I picked up my ice axe and some micro spikes. Don't know that I'll really even need those. Uh, Perk said that he would recommend bringing them, but he came through here like two weeks ago. So just wait and see. Feeling much, much better today. Uh, believe it or not, wisdom tooth is still aching, but all in all, I think I'm finally on an uphill swing. Good morning. This is where Aaron and I slept last night. He actually cowboyed against these uh, trees and I set my tent right here because it was a wind block. It was extremely windy yesterday. Uh, the winds I can tell are picking up a little bit this morning when I woke up, it was actually pretty calm. But uh, we're up over 11,000 feet, like 11,800. I think it's gonna be a really pretty day. I think we're gonna be walking just above tree line and so there will be a lot of views and I think there's gonna be a decent amount of water. And uh, oh yeah, yesterday we passed mile 800. I think we're like at 805 now. So uh, making progress a little bit at a time. Do what? I do what you said. What, step in my footprint? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're heavier. Yeah. <laughs> and look, we could have really just like gone around, but yeah. laziness. Peanut butter and honey. I haven't had one of these wraps since like first couple hundred miles on the AT. You can see tiny hairs right there and it's where some animal has brushed through here. Pretty cool. Well, that would have been fun in snow. So far, we really haven't encountered much snow, which I'm not complaining about. And uh, San Juan's have been really pretty. Very green, lots of flowers and critters. And I was talking about it earlier, you know, they, they don't look quite like the Cascades because there are some mountains in the distance that look pretty intimidating, kind of like the Sierra Nevada. But uh, I don't know, I've been saying that if the Sierra Nevada and the Cascades had a baby, it would be the San Juans. <laughs> and if y'all have ever hiked in all three, I'd be interested to uh, hear your opinion on that. <laughs> oh, I was getting this. Well. <laughs> I've noticed since we've been in the San Juans that the clouds that I've seen have been very brownish looking uh, and it's been pretty hazy like the mountains in the distance you can still see them but they just aren't as clear as I bet they normally are and if I had to guess that's probably due to the wildfire near Durango so the further on we go into the San Juans I imagine the hazier it'll probably get <laughs> are you just like waiting <laughs> Sucking Aaron's blood. <laughs> really getting after it. Aaron says like an old rig, just getting it. That's what you get. Kind of funny that I was just talking about the dirty clouds. And uh, turns out the San Juan National Forest, according to my mom, who just messaged me on the inReach, is closed for recreational activities like, you know, backpacking and hiking and camping and uh not really sure what I'm supposed to do at this point but uh yeah there you go that's uh that throws a little hitch in the giddy up in sitting in my tent last night for a while trying to uh figure out our different options I have discovered that there are basically three different alternates that we could take. 
to get out of here. And one is way longer and uh, stays off of the CDT for a while. Don't really know the water situation on it. And so it's kind of out. That's the green route in Gut Hooks. And then there's the blue route. And it's mainly four service roads that finally lead up to the highway that goes into South Fork, Colorado. And it finally matches up with the Creed route in Creed, Colorado. And then there's the option of continuing to hike in the San Juans past Wolf Creek Pass, which is where we were gonna get off and spend a little bit of time in Pagosa Springs, but I'm just afraid we won't be able to get back on there depending on, you know, the closure and everything. Uh, so we just have to go past there and kind of ration our food and then go up the Creed route to Creed. Now, that's like the most desirable uh, option because we get to do more of the San Juans. So we're doing as much of them as we can. And then also it's not all the highway walking. But if we take the Creed route and just push straight through there, we basically have to do 20 miles per day for sure. And it'll still be an extra day than what we were planning food wise. So we'll have to ration also battery power, yada, yada. Um, and then I also don't love the idea that as we go further west, we're getting closer to Durango, which is where the fire is around apparently. So as of right now, I'm kind of leaning more towards the blue route for safety purposes, but it just really stinks. Up we go. Well, this was a bit of a pucker moment. Just hard transitioning from snow to steep ground like this with kind of loose rock. And, uh, you know, not, not falling down. I mean, you wouldn't die here, but it wouldn't feel good. Hey. You're kind of hoping I would press the one. No. Oh, hey. Go. <laughs> Since we have to call and bounce our packages from Pagosa Springs, regardless of what alternate we take, we have been looking for service on all the climbs today, and no such luck. And Aaron even just climbed the big old hill over there <laughs> to get higher than we are at right now to uh, try to call the post office, but no luck. Well, this is interesting. Do not want to go across the snow right there. Or across the rocks there and get knocked under that. So, probably just gonna climb up and see if there's a better place to cross that stream. My ankles always do this in the snow. They get rubbed on my sock. So I shouldn't wear ankle socks anymore. <laughs> this is my cowboy camping spot. I am on like one of those emergency space blankets that I brought to cowboy camp on. And there's all of my stuff strode out right now. And then there's Aaron tucked away over there in the bushes. That's his cowboy camping spot. We heard that there is a really scary spot coming up, so we're going to try to get up early and go whoop it. And that's why we are cowboy camping. Well, specifically why. It got pretty chilly last night. Uh, in cowboy camping, I had to wake up at some point and put my rain clothes on. And then I covered up with my tent and there was frost on my shoes this morning and my socks that I had hung out to dry were also frosty. So I just put some of the dry, dirty ones on. But uh, anyway, only got about a few more miles till, uh, till we hit this supposed sketchy spot. I'm a little nervous about it. 
probably wouldn't have even thought as much about it if I hadn't gotten word about that particular spot. And I'm sure that I've done scarier stuff probably in the Sierra Nevada, but you just never know. And you never know what someone's level of experience is. And, you know, apparently the person who left the comment and gut hooks about it being a pretty dangerous spot didn't have any like ice axe or micro spikes or anything like that. So um, maybe just having those things, even if only for that one spot, <laughs> will uh, we'll ease our minds a little bit. Hey, sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm really hoping that this is the scary one that everyone was talking about but I I doubt it because honestly if you fell right here you might get skin up from the snow some but it looks like it'd be kind of fun a little bit maybe type 2 fun there's Aaron these folks up ahead are just stopped looking it always makes me nervous <laughs> all right well they're going down to where he is so maybe they've figured out a solution to the issue they must be crossing over a snow bridge. Yeah. He was hitting it with his trekking pole, like trying to see how steady it was. Well, it looks like the trail used to go around the edge of this bowl here. And you can kind of see it cut in the mountain over there. And then up to where those people are going. And maybe they just didn't want to go in the snow the water's right here or the dogs i don't know so they went down but i guess i'll find out i'm thinking that that little pass right there is it another couple got across i see their footsteps here they get to the rock over there Oh my gosh, okay. This is on top of the scary part. It doesn't probably look that scary, for, scary from where I'm at, but so that's where I'm gonna go down and that's what we should have traversed right there. There's there, somewhere over there. But I uh, just came up this rock right here and I am shaking now. The scariest part of all of this is like, this rock is so loose because the soil is really damp and they're not like huge rocks. So you step on the wrong one and whoop, might as well take a breather and enjoy it. What you doing? Just hanging out. 
Enjoying the view? Yeah. The last view? Getting your gravel in your butt crack sliding down the... Yeah, you see it? No! <laughs> I like how you turn your head away but you kept the camera on there. <laughs> well, they can see it if they want to. Alright, that's where I just came down from. Still shaking. <laughs> And this is, this is where we go next, which looks pretty scary, but not as bad as the other spot. Sweet. There's one of the dogs, so maybe they're making it all right. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, there goes one of the dogs. Oh, it made it. It started falling at one part. Oh my God. All right, second dog. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my gosh, that, oh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. I think it, I think they got it. Oh my that dog does not care. That dog is like, I will go down this river. I will glissade. Charlie. We finally got to the top of a climb that had cell reception and uh, we were able to call the post office in Pagosa Springs and ask them to kindly bounce our packages forward to Creed because hopefully tomorrow we'll hit South Fork at some point and then from there go on into Creed and stay the night. So it should give the packages time to get there before we do. Uh, but it's just like those little things, those little details that you got to deal with when you have a circumstance like this, you know, a, a detour, or a fire closer, or a reroute for some reason. It is pretty unfortunate that we're only going to get like a taste of the San Juans. Uh, and I am bummed out by it, but it's just one of those things that you have to deal with on a through hike. You got to accept it and and push on and it's interesting to me because I think Aaron was a little bit more bummed out about it than I was and this being his first through hike it makes sense because he's like oh my gosh this is such a beautiful area and it stinks that we're not going to get to to see more of it and it does but like the ultimate goal is Canada and we're going to get to see the Wind River Range and the rest of Colorado is going to be beautiful and you know we can always come back and see the San Juans and, and do, you know, the whole loop. I don't know, for me, you know, it's, this hiccup isn't stopping our progress or our, our continuous footstep to Canada. So I'm relieved about that. <laughs> Leaving the South San Juan 
wilderness. Like I said, while I am disappointed because this is one of the biggest highlights of this trail, uh, we did get a taste of it, we did get to see some of it, and our ultimate goal of finishing the through hike is not being impeded. So I'm just really glad that what we have seen of the San Juans has been like paradise and it hasn't been extremely smoky. We're actually able to see views even though they're a little hazy. So it could be a lot worse. I'm just ready to get this road walking out of the way and get back on the official CDT and uh, enjoy some mountains again.